So let's get started. Here's the plot summary for Christmas by Design. A fashion designer learns what's most important in life when she joins a Christmas challenge to create a new holiday-themed collection. Short and sweet. Let's go. Josh, did you happen to know that this movie is based on the book Jingle Jammies? <laughs> no. And now it suddenly all makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't read Jingle Jammies? The no. Selling... It's <laughs> not on my camera. Yeah, I saw it somewhere online and then I they had it like kind of tiny in the opening credits. And I was like, that's a fun name. I can get down with that. Yeah. Okay. So we open to a snowy scene, of course, and our fashion designer, Charlotte, is passed out atop her fashion sketches. She doesn't have time to sleep. She's just very busy, very drained creatively. She's feeling the stress of designing something new because she has a custom shop. Alistair, is that how she pronounced it? Alistair. 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 <laughs> there. It's, yeah. Abercrombie and Hollister, Alistair. Um, she's very bougie. It's custom tailored, individually made, individually stitched, hand sewn fashion. And her business, we get the impression right out of the gate, is on the struggle bus. Not a lot of people looking for that kind of thing. We meet her sassy seamstress who is full of energy first thing in the morning as though she's had three cups of coffee out of the gate. They go downstairs because she, Charlotte lives in the apartment above. So they go downstairs to the shop. Her mom calls, wants her to have time in her busy schedule. To come home for Christmas. Because again, if you're a busy businesswoman, you can't go see your family at the holidays. It's just that the, the two don't connect, Impossible. I guess, in, Impossible. The, in these worlds. Which leads me to wonder, are there really that many people out there in the world who are too busy to go home for Christmas? Because boy, that is something that we hang our hat on in these movies quite regularly. Does that happen more? Maybe I don't hang out those? with enough corporate people, but in my industry... Pretty much everything shuts down the week between Christmas and New Year's. Precisely. Anyway. I mean, even if people aren't taking it off, they're taking it off. They're throttling down. And maybe my boss won't listen to this. (laughs) Okay. So anyways, she's like, sorry, mom, I can't come. I'm just much too busy with my fashion business. And mom's like, hey, this is the last year of the elf capades. Remember the elf capades that your dad started and put his heart and soul into, you know, because he's he passed away don't you care it on me she didn't really lay it on that thick but that's what we learned and she's like i'm sorry i just can't come by so charlotte not my favorite neither warm nor fuzzy out of the gate she's stressed she's looking at budgets and charts in her apartment and above and goes to fill up her glass of water and no water coming out she makes the boo-boo of and my husband pointed this out she turns the faucet on nothing comes out she doesn't turn the faucet off she leaves it wide open it can, and she's so busy she just walks off now i'm not saying she flooded this whole place but she probably was a contributing factor because what do you know the next morning she goes downstairs the pipes from her apartment have leaked into this Hollister, hollister hollister shop and water is on every custom piece the landlord's like yo not really sorry about this inconvenience you'll gotta be out at least for a week whoopsie doodle on you so Charlotte and Sassy Seamstress are got a blow dryer. They're trying to salvage anything they can, but it's not looking good. And our girl Charlotte needs a Christmas miracle. Luckily, Sassy Seamstress had entered her into a contest. It's Warwick's War, bleh, 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 Warwick's Christmas Challenge. She meets the head honcho and has to stoop down to a low level of designing affordable home and family lines for this contest. But if she wins... She'll get her stuff in stores for a year. And because our girl is hard up, she succumbs to it and agrees to enter this lowly challenge, even though it's not top notch a fashion. Josh, what were you thinking about Charlotte and all of this shenanigan out of the gate? Well, I think that she certainly was doing that big city thing, you know, where it's like, oh, I'm pursuing my fashion career and I am very highbrow. I had to wonder when we first heard about Warwick's if it was more like a Neiman Marcus, like a high-end department store, or if it was more like a Kohl's. I couldn't quite figure out like what what's the scale of what they're trying to do here. But but it cracked me up that they were pitching this whole like home and family concept as though that was really sort of lowbrow when I kept sitting there thinking, 
isn't home and family precisely the people that you're trying to get to watch this very movie about this agree? entire thing? Yeah, like. <laughs> yeah. You literally, Hallmark literally used to have a show called Home and Family. Home and Family, yeah. <laughs> so if you want us to like Charlotte, mm -mm -mm, you're not doing it right. So I guess no. they wanted us to hate her because I did. I was not a fan. All right. So since Charlotte has to be out of her flooded apartment, she decides to mooch off her family and go home for the holidays. Not to be with them, but to use their indoor plumbing. <laughs> She doesn't say that, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't agreed. like her. So, okay. So she enters town and immediately rear ends a red truck and her front bumper completely just falls off. Like what was it held together with some glue? I mean, it was just sad. But when we meet Spencer, Spencer's a mechanic and offers to fix her car. And I wrote in all caps, we just saw this bit on where are you Christmas? <laughs> we just had a mechanic last week. I know. Apparently, that's going to be the emerging trend in these movies. Big city girl meets a mechanic. <laughs> I guess it's a very niche market, but we're getting two of them right out of the gate. So she's snotty. She says some ugly things about his coveralls. And he's like, oh, I love this town. She's like, why? Why would you be here? Oh, OK. I couldn't help but think that this guy looks like Matt Saracen from Friday Night Lights, which may not mean a lot to a lot of you. But if you see Friday Night Lights, that's the image you can have in your head. OK. So I almost called a map. Spencer takes her home and their house is big time fancy. Her parents' house. They have a Christmas tree on the balcony outside. You know it's big time. Exactly. And the family dynamic is such where dad has passed away. Mom has remarried and remarried this guy named Rick. Uh, uh, hey, Rick. Charlotte. By the way, Sassy Seamstress calls her Charlotte. <laughs> the way she says her Char, name. Yeah. Charlotte. Charlotte. That's how she says it. Charlotte. But her name is Charlotte. <laughs> and Charlotte, Charlotte is not a fan of Rick whatsoever. <laughs> Makes it no, and Rick seems, painfully aware. <laughs> yeah, Rick seems fine, actually. Rick does not seem like the villain here. He seems the villain great. is Char, but okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure somebody said. That one of the family members had bet the other that ten dollars that she wouldn't show up in town, and again I wrote, "We just saw this bit of Where Are You Christmas." <laughs> the dad had bet the mayor that Addie wouldn't show up last week. I know. What are the odds? It's just the same sort of trope about too busy to come home for Christmas. I mean, there's only so many things you could do with it. So we need like a bingo card, you know, like we do. We need a big city lady bingo card. And one of the squares has to be someone in town makes a bet that you're not coming home. <laughs> it's very specific <laughs> to have occurred twice. And also later in the movie, they mentioned lasagna. And, you know, they mentioned lasagna a lot. And where are you Christmas? It was three points that are not big things. They were little things, but we reused them. It was wild well, to me. Hit a mechanic uh, know, maybe, in the rear end. <laughs> maybe there was some kind of like a summit or a conference where they're like, okay, we're coming, workshopping new ideas for this season. And all the writers are like, you know, I've never thought of lasagna. Yep. I'm going to work that into my movie. And they didn't talk to each other. And they're like, no, I took lasagna. Or maybe at Anyways. this point, we're just being punked and they've all just decided they're going to throw the word lasagna into every script this season. And we'll just, we'll be the ones to discover this Easter egg early on. <laughs> I love that. I would totally appreciate that. I'm mad because it makes me want lasagna. <laughs> and it's not something I can just whip up willy nilly. I don't have any fazolis around me anymore to go through the drive through and get some lasagna. So. Not it's sponsored definitely, by like, Fazoli's. <laughs> well, I could go for some other breadsticks right about now. Anyways. Okay. So Char goes to the quaint diner and we meet her aunt Dee Dee, who is delightful. They're serving green punch and cookies and have a little Christmas shindig. The town is taking back the funding for elf capades that her father, like I mentioned, had started. And so Charlotte now decides she's not happy about that. Spencer's there helping out as well, and they have a heart-to-heart -heart at Dee Dee's, and neither are interested in dating right now. They agree on a deal. She can be his buffer because every townie that's female in this town is oogling and drooling over Spencer, like catcalling him. And auga, it was like a cartoon. Basically, their eyes were popping out of their head. Auga, like heart-shaped things around. Okay, so she can be his buffer for the events, and he will be her model because he's about the same size that he needs to be for this, you know, contest that she's going to be in. What did you think about that deal? 
Well, she says, will you be my mannequin? Not just a model, but a mannequin. And I'm like, oh, is this all he is to you? Is just the right height and weight for you to build your designs around? I mean. Shouldn't even speak. Yeah. <laughs> don't have opinions or ideas. Please don't talk thinks- to me. Just wear the garment. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the next day, she doesn't have time for dinner with her family, but she does have time to hang out with Spencer. She's still stuck up in naughty she says pajama pants in public in new york city is a sin and i wrote mm, i beg to differ i bet there's some parts in new york city where people just try traipse out in some pajama pants and have no problem with it maybe not the upper east side maybe not like uh what was that show i never watched it uh, gossip girl where the fashion was front and center maybe not that part of new york certainly not something you would ever see on the rack at alistair <laughs> alistair Ooh. okay we learned that Spencer was married, but then his wife got sick, and she's also no longer with us. Charlotte sees her ex in town, who abandoned her after her dad passed like a low-life miscreant. What in the world? He was basically jealous that she was grieving and didn't have time for him anymore, is what we're led to believe. And they were engaged, yes? Isn't that what yeah. she said? Yeah, it was serious. Mm-hmm. And now he's the mayor of the town. And later we learn that he's the very mayor that took away the funding for the elf capade. So he is V-I-L-L-A-I-N villain. He is, but we really don't see him that much. No, we don't. He doesn't. <laughs> it didn't really, like, if, again, if you're going to give me a villain, go full villain. Please. Not this, like. Could have, could have totally gone Claire St. Clair with this one. I mean. If you watch Snow Bride, and if you haven't, you should. Claire St. Clair is an ultimate Hallmark villain. So here's what we're going to do, Jennifer. We're just going to keep mentioning yeah. Claire St. Clair until every listener of this podcast watches Snow Bride as they all should, period. <laughs> you should. It was on Hallmark. I don't know if it was this weekend or it's coming up this week. Set your DVRs for it. It is my personal all-time favorite Hallmark Christmas movie. I can't speak for Josh, but it is delightful. It checks all the boxes. It has the mom from home improvement in it. I mean, what more do you want? It's like, great. Seriously. It's great. Anyway, sorry. We digress. Anyways, we digress. Okay. So Spencer's like, come on, let's get out of here. So they go play darts at another local establishment to get their mind off things. And the townie cat calls Spencer again. So she decides to touch his face and gaze into his eyes. And things get a little heated for a moment. I thought they might kiss, but they don't. Too. All right. So then... Next scene, Spencer takes her to a garage that must have been filmed during a tornado warning because the wind was like whipping her hair, which she has very nice hair, all about the garage. But he shows her that he's been restoring a car for two years. And the car was built for the average American family. I don't remember what kind it was. I don't know cars. I'm sorry. Just think classic car. Okay. It was built for the average American family. And your designs, Char, can do the same. So he's trying to inspire her, which I thought was very sweet. The grand finale of Elf Capades every year is the pajama So they come together and have the bright idea she should make pajamas for Warwicks for the contest. Because no one has ever thought of making cute, affordable Christmas pajamas for the holidays. Exactly. I wrote in my notes, wow, this is a revolutionary concept matching PJs. She's super excited and has clearly never been to an Old Navy. <laughs> Old Navy, Walmart, Target, calls literally, Italy. literally any Nordstrom, any home and family any establishment is going to <laughs> any any anything is going to have some Christmas jammies. Vineyard Vines. We had a new outlet mall open last week, and I was at the VIP opening event because you know, too, too. Every store had Christmas jammies. I'm wearing a Vineyard Vines Christmas shirt now that I got. It's Come not on. revolutionary. Anywho. <laughs> All right. So the next night they have family game night as part as of Elf Capades, but they're just hanging out at their individual houses. So what budget are we cutting? I don't understand. <laughs> it's really just trying to inspire the town to do things, kind of like Mary Textmas did. Like it's prompting them to do things throughout the weeks leading up to Christmas. All right. So they have family game night. Spencer comes over and decides he gets to suggest the game. He wants to do Pictionary. They bring out this whiteboard that has garland and lights and only red and green markers. I was like, okay, I see you guys. (laughs) This is some serious Pictionary, and I love Pictionary. So that made me happy. And a Bobo in sync Christmas song plays. 
It was a Bobo so- and Sing song, by the way. It was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. But they're getting into it. They're having fun with her family. Finally, she's actually like hanging out with them, which is nice of her to throw him a bone there. Turns out Spencer picked Pictionary to get her inspired to draw because he's so encouraging. It worked because we get Charlotte doing a sewing montage and her design for the pajamas are something. (laughs) They were a choice. Would you wear the pajama design? Let me see if I can describe it. It was tight fitted. It was plaid, but then it looked, did it have a hoodie pocket, like a double hand pocket (laughs) thing on the front? Well, there, like was early, there was an early version that one side of it was like a tartan plaid and the other was a solid. And then the pants were the same but swapped so you look like a checkerboard. And I was like a crisscross no. make you want to jump, jump. Yeah. yeah. I was a no on that one. The second one, I could get behind a, a comfy hoodie. I'm wearing one right now. I love a hoodie. So I don't know. But is it enough to be revolutionary when a contest? Especially from a major national retail. I, yeah, it believability okay. was out the window on this one. All right. Well, anyways, her sister is doing her makeup because she's going to go see Spencer. And she suggests that I think maybe you like Spencer. She's like, no, relationships are hard enough without it being long distance. Because in case you've forgotten, she lives in New York City and not whatever small town this is. Four hours away. All right. They go play Santa Bingo. And they had our bingo cage from our draft episode. They were cranking the balls and numbers out. I will say this to give me warm fuzzies because my family has a Santa bingo that has been passed down from generation to generation. And it is like, I can't remember, but it's like, you know, uh, T, twas the night before Christmas. And you had the little Santa pieces that you put on. So I enjoyed this immensely. The townies at the bingo game are super curious if she's here with Spencer. We uh, see the ex. He took away the funding for Elf Capades. He's mayor. They, it gets down to Spencer and Charlotte versus the mayor ex and his new fiance. So they have a mistletoe tiebreaker. Whatever significant other can get up to either Charlotte or the mayor first wins. Mm-hmm. And Spencer swoops in, lays the big old kiss on her, and they win a giant, like one of those like six foot tall stuffed teddy bears that's dressed up like an elf. Like a carnival prize. I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah. That was a fun scene. The next morning, Charlotte Bebop's downstairs at her parents' house, her mom's house, and she is a smitten kitten, and they all call her out for it. She's like, Nana, I don't like Spencer. What? Her mom tries to inspire her by bringing out Christmas scrapbooks of the past, which looked to be like from five years ago. And they're in Christmas jammies that match probably that they got BOGO at Old Navy. Here we are. Okay, so Spencer takes Charlotte on a surprise little not date date and has her eyes closed and reveals he found her dad's tow truck on some web page that buys and sells old cars he bought it to fix up for her i wrote bold but i do like it (laughs) josh is giving a sad pouty face right now it's a big gesture for somebody you've known for what at this point 96 hours maybe (laughs) like four or five days max yeah yeah He turns on the radio and they sit in the truck and look in the back and find dad's old coveralls in the back too. She puts her head on his shoulder and this is the only moment really that I was like, okay, she does have a heart. She's not so grinchy stuffy because they discussed how hard it is to move on after losing someone and she snuggles with him and this probably, probably, probably. Why did I start talking like Muffin from Bluey? (laughs) It's probably my favorite scene in the movie. So there you go. Agreed. All right. The next day, Spencer's at Dee Dee's diner, and she encourages her to tell Charlotte how he feels. So he takes her a lovely Christmas floral arrangement, and he overhears her talking about him to Sassy Seamstress. And she's like, I do like him. And he's like, all grinning. He's happy. But then she snottily says that she's in New York, and he's just a local mechanic who wears coveralls all day. It'll never work. He leaves. She goes on to say nice things after. Maybe it could work, but Spencer didn't hear that. He peaced out, rightfully so. Oopsie doodle. Yes. And kind of early. I'll talk more about that later. But anywho. Hmm. 
So they were supposed to meet at the diner, her and Spence, and he stands her up and is very cold to her. She shows up at the garage and he says, which I will give him credit, we have communication. He's like, I heard what you said on the phone about me. We didn't have this mystery of like, why is he mad at me? He lays it out there like, I know what you did. And she tries to clear it up and he says, I can't be with someone who cares more about your career than your family. Things are escalating quickly he's getting very irritated she bought him coffee and she keeps trying to shove the coffee in his face to show she's nice and he's like not having it she says maybe you're just not over laura his ex and then he like flings his hand and accidentally knocks the coffee out of her hands and it gets on the pajama sample for the contest and she says i guess this week was just a waste of time and she takes off what did you think about that scene? This was a very dramatic moment because it feels like the plot has gone and it's just like this sudden uptick in drama and all of a sudden it's built in conflict and it's big conflict. And of course, she's showing up with these samples, which are presumably going to go to this Christmas Eve fashion show that she's got to do. And we sort of get like a layered oopsie doodle here happening <laughs> because now she has another problem on top of her relationship. So. We love a multi-tier oopsie doodle. <laughs> it was so like I was kind of tootling around. And then when the coffee thing happened, I was like, what did he hit her? Like I had to rewind it. I was so taken aback. Now we're doing he did not. violence as a subplot. Yeah, it, got really, it could have gotten really dark, but it didn't. So it was just like it was an actual oopsie doodle that got out of hand. So she gets home and her family is playing Jenga and she just unleashes all of her anger at them she's mad that rick is in her dad's chair and calls her charlie because that's only for my family yeah and they're like hey you didn't come home when dad was sick and needed you the most and they're really like calling her on it and laying down some truth she's like forget it i'm going to new york city first thing in the morning since my pajamas are ruined it doesn't matter another really intense scene i know i know just the theatrics of it all. It's just staggering. Yeah. Next morning, her and her sister make up. They're going to team up for Pajamas 2.0. She's got a better idea. Christmas coveralls with custom embroidery kit that they can put their name on it like what her dad wore all the time. And I did enjoy this idea. I did too. I kind of want some. Her, I know. So her whole family can sew, luckily, and they all get to work. We get another sewing montage. They're really cranking out these samples. I would be in trouble because I can't even sew a button on anything. But then she shows up to Spencer's in a green peacoat. Josh, I'm calling it. This is the year of the green peacoat. They must have heard the red peacoat stereotype. They're like, okay, never more. Now you get forest green peacoats, and I really want one. All right, she takes off she sends spencer a gift and the note or drops it off and the note says i thought you could use a new pair and it's the coveralls which is supposed to be a sweet gesture but i felt like it's kind of icky like it could be like thought you could use a new pair of coveralls because that's all you wear that's all you ever be or coveralls you and clearly I I didn't take it that way. I thought this was very much her trying to meet him on his territory and saying, I see you for what you are. I'm not making fun of you. And in fact, what you wear and the way you live has inspired the very entry I'm throwing into this big hotshot fashion competition. That was what I took away from it. Okay. Well, anyway, she goes to New York City. <laughs> It's Christmas Eve. She's like, family, I'm going to be back for the pajama And they're like, it's okay if you're not. I mean, <laughs> you haven't been around in four years. And she's like, no, I will be back. So she goes. And it's very like sterile, techno music, fashion, whatever you would think about, like a fashion show runway type of an exhibit type thing. Turns out they push the exhibit time or presentation time later, and she will miss the pajama if she sticks around. And she's like, you know what? I can't wait. Family has to come first. So she leaves the samples. No, she asks for them back. Sorry. Drives another four hours back to the small town. And she's calling Spencer, calling Spencer. He's still mad. He ignores her. And she leaves him a voicemail and comes to the shop to reconcile. She says, I love you because they've known each other a week. 
which they usually don't say I love you in these movies. I feel like they kiss and they promise to be together forever and quit their careers. But saying I love you was bold. He says it back. And then he reveals he had her coveralls on under his other coveralls. And they go to the pajama jamboree, pajama pajama jama jamba juice. Then she gets a call. She's a, the family's around. They're all rocking around the Christmas tree. It's a call. Roger wants to give her a one-year exclusive contract, and she can move her store back home if she wants to make the fabric and the outfits. He doesn't care where she works. He respects her decision that she left earlier and was moved by it, and he's signing her on to whatever store USA. And they're all happy. Okay, it is time for our gold or coal segment. Here's how this works. We each get to give three gifts. If there's more gold here, we're going to call it Christmas Couture. If there's more coal, it's just going to be a frumpy frock. And if it's a tie three to three, we're just going to call it a meh re-Christmas. Jennifer, you're up first. Go. I'm going to give some gold for the leading male, Jonathan Kelts. I have not seen him in any movies. I think he's done a few others. I haven't seen him before. I really liked him a lot. I thought he had more of a range than we usually get. He could be the sweet, heartfelt guy, but he also is not a robot. He has emotions and feelings, and when she was treating him poorly, he called her out on it, and I respected it. I would love to see him in more movies. A gold. Agreed. I thought he also very much felt like a middle America kind of guy. He wasn't this like big hotshot, big city guy. He was like somebody who could live down the street, and I like that about him, too. I'm going to give some gold for my first. There were a great amount of Christmas feels in this one. The decorations felt good. Some of the Christmas traditions felt good. I liked the whole elf capade subplot that kind of carried throughout the whole thing. It felt like something that brought this community together. And I did get a mild, mild dose of Christmas all in my fuzzy feels because of it. I will give gold for Christmas Fields for Santa Bingo for the reasons I already described earlier. My family has played it for many a year, my extended family. And I was like, hey, we're not the only ones. I feel seen. So that gets gold for me. Good. I am going to give some additional gold. I liked the oopsie doodle here in this one. I liked that it was a layered oopsie doodle. It happened a bit earlier. So she had to deal with this piece of it. And then we had to deal with the jammy portion of it. And then it all sort of came together in the end. So I liked how it actually sort of propelled the plot forward rather than just being this like last minute hiccup that throws everything in jeopardy. So gold for me on that. I feel that. I feel that. I am going to give some coal. I didn't really like the side characters. I didn't love her, but we weren't supposed to love her for most of the movie, right? So that, that that's fine. But the... The mom and the stepdad and the sister. I just didn't really care about them. I didn't think they were very heartwarming. Honestly, I may not have gone home to see them either at Christmas. Well said. Well said. I am going to give a little bit of cold here. And you sort of spoke to this earlier. But this declaration of love that we got at the very end of this felt a little. Well, not a little. Felt extremely forced. Like one week. You guys have known each other one week. Why can't the conclusion of these just be like, I appreciate you. Let's get to know each other and maybe go on a date together. Why does it have to be like, you're my one and only? I mean, it just, it doesn't need to do that to still give you a great ending on these. And it just felt a little bit forced. Why can't it just be the next step? You know, I don't know. Anyway. Let's go on a date. Exactly. Hey, I really like you. We should date and see where this goes. Please. I'm not, I'm going to move. I'm going to make clothes here. I'm moving back. Let's see what happens. It would be totally acceptable for that. They could still kiss and get the whole swelling romance thing without declaring that they love each other. Also, it was bold that he bought her dad's car or tow truck but i just like that so he's one for a big gesture isn't he yes it he is but if that had happened in real life i'd be like whoa bro like, he's up he's up on how much gas was pedal. it now yes. i'm like indebted to you i don't know it could get a little weird so yeah anyway so bottom yeah. line here for gold to coal we are going to call it christmas couture i thought it was a good one won't be one of my favorites probably for the season i think there's going to be better stuff to come but I thought it was a good one. I will say I feel like this is a missed opportunity for Hallmark. I mean, 
the garment that she showed off at the final thing is not a bad garment. You could mm -hmm. mass produce that and sell it. I'm not going to lie. I would probably buy one with my name on it. Like, I mean, absolutely. where's where's pajama grams to like swoop in and say, we'll make that and sell it. I mean, this seemed like a natural opportunity that they should have had a little QR code on the bottom of the screen. That's like, yeah. buy yours right now. I mean, they could have been making some bank off of this. That was just a side note from me. Yeah, <laughs> it did seem like a missed opportunity because I would totally have bought it as well, especially with the embroidery kit. Although I would have to pay somebody to embroider mine. I would pay extra. To have Hallmark embroider mine. Precisely. I'd pay 10 bucks With to gold have With thread. No yes, less. please. Something. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. And that, dear friends, is another episode of Do You Watch What I Watch? Special thanks, as always, to our friend Nick Schwartz for our theme song and to you for listening. Hey, if you like our podcast, be sure to tell a friend. You can also like, subscribe, and leave a five-star review. Connect with us on our social channels, too. You can find everything, all the links, all the information, and all the movies we will be watching, recapping, and reviewing during Countdown to Christmas leading up to the holiday season on our website at doyouwatchwhatiwatch.com. So next time, we are going to be, I guess, flipping the dial a little bit, and we're going over to Hallmark Movies and Mysteries for our next episode where we are going to be watching, recapping, and reviewing My Christmas Guide Here's the synopsis. After losing his eyesight, a college professor adopts a seeing eye dog from a guide dog trainer. As they all begin to spend time together, his confidence returns and his heart begins to open. We will have so much to discuss. And until then, may your days be merry and bright. We'll see you next time. Yeah.